Welcome back to Linode, I'm Mike Ellison, and in this third video of Fundamentals of API Security, we will be taking a look at API manipulation. Now let's dive straight into ways that threat actors can manipulate your API that can cause severe issues to your APIs and the data. With microservices architecture, more and more API endpoints are created. And as typical, API design best practices are applied. Many of the common API design structures that you see are using the same API endpoint, but changing the HTTP method to change the action. Think of an online library. The library offers an API to retrieve books. This get slash book will return the name and information of a specific book, very helpful. However, post slash book will create a new book and put slash book will update the existing book and even delete slash book can complete that book and remove it entirely from the database. If a user can get the book, but also have the ability to then just change the API request to a put post or delete operation, they could be accessing admin functions that they really should not have access to. It is critical to protect these admin endpoints properly with secure authentication and authorization mechanisms and try to abstract them away as much as possible. Let's look at Crappy again. Here we can see another API request being made and we can see in the API response that it actually triggers a second API request to slash admin with these API endpoints listed. Without proper security in place, threat actors could try to utilize these slash admin endpoints and manipulate data, either by changing values, adding values, or in the worst case situation, deleting all the values and making your data disappear. So keep HTTP methods and the supported API endpoints in mind, as well as proper abstraction for API functions when developing your API. If we combine the broken function level authorization with the previously mentioned broken object level authorization or even broken user authentication, your API might really be set up for failure. Easy ways to gain intelligence on how your API works and next, how to easily manipulate the data in the API. Now next we will look at injection attacks, another very common and very risky attack factor used by threat actors to manipulate data. OWASP has warned developers for years on the different types of injection attacks. Ways to feed malicious data to your infrastructure or databases to either disrupt, manipulate or destroy your data. For many years we saw traditional web application injection attacks. Form fields would get used to load in specific injection attacks like SQL injection to manipulate the SQL databases. Given the fact that for many of the API endpoints, you have the ability to submit query string parameters, specific payload in the form of JSON, or even malicious payloads that could very well lead to issues when sent. When developing your API, make sure you apply proper data validation. Make sure to handle special characters properly in the right place and disallow them in places where they're simply not needed. For instance, if you're using an alphanumeric object ID, you really shouldn't be able to submit special characters. And if your API interfaces with a SQL or even a NoSQL database underneath it, ensure that threat actors cannot send known SQL injection attacks as part of the API endpoint. Again, the parameters or payload by properly sanitizing this data. Web application firewalls can be very helpful when protecting against injection attacks. Inspecting the request in headers, parameters, and payload to make sure that they do not include elements for a harmful injection attack is something that can help. Your API objects come with many different fields of information or simply properties. Think of a loyalty program at your favorite boba store. Your user object has your name, telephone number, as well as properties that can also track the amount of visits being updated every single time you make a purchase. Now in your app, you have the API endpoint to update the user. A simple put 
slash user slash ID that allows them to change their name or telephone number when needed. Simple enough. The put request uses JSON payloads and sends name, Mike, telephone number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. However, with mass assignment risks being involved, your API is actually able to update other properties as well, where the user could actually be sending in name, telephone, but also the amount of visits to say 25, it can increase their visit counter and earn themselves a free boba. It is important here to think about the way your properties get updated across your API endpoints. Especially sensitive or critical properties should be handled carefully with allow or deny lists from being accessed by specific API endpoints. Again, the combination of different API exploits here to manipulate data is critical. Having the ability to gain access to specific functions through broken function level authorization and then mass assignment to update properties with these functions is a major risk to your API. Thanks for watching. If you are new to Linode, be sure to click on the link in the description below to get a $100 credit added to your brand new Linode account so you can start building right away. Also, consider subscribing to the Linode channel to get notified of brand new videos coming out every week.